What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to make this beautiful pedestal table which we use for games but it also butts up right to our kitchen table to make a 12 and a half foot some odd long dining table which is awesome. You could probably tell in the intro that this table is made out of maple, which is the same species of wood that the kitchen table is made out of. Like I said, they butt together, so we wanted everything to match up very well. Now, these are some pretty gnarly slabs, we've got a pretty bad twisted one, so we gotta get creative to get the amount of wood we need for this table and the pedestal base out of these slabs. As you can see here, I'm basically cutting a straight, nice and square piece out of this gnarly section. There is a very twisted board that we had to cut the piece we needed out of and actually laminate it together because by the time we milled everything down, it was too thin. So once I got everything marked out, it was over to the bandsaw to make those rough cuts out of the slabs so that we had slightly more manageable pieces of wood to work with. Also, it is going to be a live edge table to match the kitchen table. We don't actually want the bark on there, so it was a removal process, and because this was kind of healthy pieces of wood, the bark didn't just pop off. It took a little work to get it off of there. These are actually in very good shape, so I don't need to joint a, a, a face. Um, I'm gonna run them through the planer, and then I'll take them back through and joint an edge on the jointer. But. Lots of work on the planer to get them down to about an inch and a half. They are about two inches right now. And uh, then, we'll, then we'll do that edge on the jointer. And these boards, the interior boards, we'll run them through the table saw to get that other edge squared up. Then we're ready for glue up. Once the good looking boards were skip plain on the planer, it was over to the jointer to square up that one edge that will be butted together for the glue up or butted up against the fence of the table saw to square up the other sides. over to our monster four horse Harvey table saw to square up the opposite sides. This table saw chews up maple like candy. It actually chews hickory up too, no problem at all. Beautiful edge off of this table saw, ready for glue up. Once everything is all squared up, I spent a moment to align everything the way that looked best and had a nice symmetrical look across the table, and then use some Type Bond 2 to glue everything up. And we're flat. Camera doesn't, uh, eh, I guess it's pretty good right there. Camera makes it look a little wavy, but it's, it's in good shape. One little casualty, whacked my finger on corner or something when I was hammering things flat. Many, many projects are successful because of the comedy of errors that happens as you're building. I am gonna cut the table we just glued together apart and glue it back together. The reason I'm doing that is during the glue up, there was well, right where the track saw is, there must have been some tension in there and I had to pile clamps up when I noticed that there was a bit of a gap. So I piled clamps up, I think glue had set up a little bit. And if I wiggle it now, I can see it move around a little bit and I would much rather cut it, glue it up now, take another half an hour instead of get this on a, get this on a stand and in the house and then have it snap on me under tension later. So I'm gonna run the track saw right through that glue line. Uh, we might have to joint it to get it all nice and crispy again and then glue it right up. Should only take a minute or two. Definitely the right decision. Popped right together. Now that we got the table glued back together and that one joint fixed up, it is time to square up our ends. And again, I'm going to go back to the Craig track saw to make quick work of that. Cut one side, square as can be, measure across to the other side, and then square up that edge. And then it was time to spin. 
spend a lot of time with the sander. Cleaning up the edges, making sure we have no swirl marks on the top, working our way all the way from about 80 grit up to 240. And for the tabletop, we are going to be using Rubio Monaco Pure Finish on there. My new favorite finish for flat surfaces like tables, because it is one coat and you are done. Typically I do two coats to add a little bit more durability, but you can do both sides of the table in quick succession and you're ready to move on. So it just saves a lot of time compared to my spray finish or don't do it at all mantra. Don't worry, we're definitely going to spray the base of this table. Pour Rubio Monocoat on, spatula it around, wipe it off, and you're ready to go. Like I said, pretty good stuff. Wanted to take a quick pause from today's video to thank the sponsor who is our friends over at Carolina Shoes, Carolina Boots. I am wearing their Cardinal series right now. These are, I think, the six inch boot. They have a steel toe or a composite toe, aluminum toe, don't remember which one. Nice heavy tread on there, very comfortable boots in there, replacing my favorite 28s, which are getting seriously worn out. Right now, use the code DIYTyler15 for 15% off the entire Cardinal line, more than just this design right here, and all accessories. Again, DIY Tyler 15 for 15% 15 off. Get them quick because it is time to do some yard work, like mowing the grass, which I'm gonna do right now. You guys enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks Carolina for sponsoring the video. So we got the top done and out of the way for the most part, and now we gotta make the pedestal base of this table, which is actually the more complicated and honestly the more fun portion. Again, we're going to do our typical milling process, start at the miter saw, move over to the jointer to square up a couple of sides, and then flatten everything out on the planer. Now, we need to glue a bunch of pieces of wood together to make thicker wood, because that is all we had to be able to work with. So I'm going to do that using some type on 2 and a bunch of clamps. Once we are cured up and out of that glue up, it's back over to the miter saw to square up some sides. And then we need to do some very, very accurate dados on the table saw with a big dado stack to be able to do our half lap cross joints. I'm using this eye gauge measurement tool to be able to measure the depth of your blade on the table saw or router bit. And it is awesome. Dead on. Tickles my inner engineering spirit right there. Good stuff. I made these deep dados, making sure I had the fence of the table saw slid back as you can see over there on the left, and then with a sacrificial fence on the Harvey Compass miter gauge, a couple of quick passes, plenty of power with this saw, and we are ready to go. Using some curvature in the shop, just a paint can from General Finishes, to mark out the curves that we want to put on all sides of this pedestal base. We'll cut them over at the bandsaw and then flatten everything up or smooth everything out over on the rigid belt sander. This is double flip table, something I made a while ago. Plans for that link down in the description below if you are interested. To this day, I still don't have four tools on this thing. Now on one of the two dados that we made on the table saw for the legs, meh, the, it was the first one. Didn't come out so great. So. On the miter saw with that new CMT blade that I have, it, it's amazing how smooth a cut this gives. And I was able to shave off this tiny little bit and we'll just put two, one of them on, on either side here and that'll, that'll snug up that joint right there. And then the post will come down on top of it and uh, once we get the stain on there, hopefully you never see and no one will ever know. So I clamped on a couple of these 90 degree guides to make sure everything was perfectly square. As you can see, clamped them onto one piece of the cross base, added the glue, put everything together, put our spacers in, and then added the other clamps to make sure everything was square, and then a big clamp across the middle to make sure everything was snug and tight.
to attach the top and the bottom cross members to the middle pedestal portion, the vertical portion, I'm going to be using four dowels. Now, the sound, the microphone on my camera was off, so I'll just have to explain to you what I'm doing. It was just drill sounds in there anyway. But anyway, I used a Rockler dowel gauge to drill holes in the base. Then I transferred those locations over to the vertical portion and drilled holes in there as well. And I am using three eighths dowels and there will be four of them, one in each corner. Make sure you got plenty of Type on 2 on there. Bang everything together. And then I did add a gigantic six inch Spax screw through there to make sure everything was pulled extremely tight so that glue up joint was perfect. And it was pretty much the same operation for the cross beam that goes on the top. As you can see, this is a little flatter, a little wider, just so that you don't hit your knee on this because it will be at the top of the table. Lots of clamps, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we are transferring the location of the vertical portion onto this cross member, marking it out, drilling the holes with the Rockler dowel gauge, just as we did before, four dowels, one in each corner. And then again, gonna flip it over, drill some holes to countersink a big old spack screw in there, and drive that home. Now this is gonna be a table and people are going to lean on this and sit on all four sides of this table, so we need to make sure we have some good support. So I'm gonna add these diagonal pieces. These are also made out of maple, making sure they are spaced out very, very well. And I have my square set up so I can quickly put it back into place and be right exactly where I need to go. I'm using some tight bond, quick activating CA glue to hold everything in place so that the tight bond two can cure up over time. The quick activator allows me to push the diagonal pieces into place and then they hold so nothing wiggles around as I drill through and add a two inch Craig panhead screw and then cap that off with a maple plug drilled out of the same species of wood so that the plugs kind of disappear. It turned out beautifully and I will definitely be doing this style of table again sometime in the future as it is a beautiful table and so far has held up to be a very sturdy and stable design. trying to align the top to the base right now. It's a little bit tricky because the, the slabs for the top are not straight, the sides are not straight, and the bottom is straight. So I'm measuring this, referencing off the table, so the pedestal is nice and straight, and then I'm just kind of eyeballing the top because we want this to be removable. So I'm putting these, these uh, sections of wood right here, and we're gonna drill a hole through the side so we can put a, a dowel through here and that's what's going to hold the tabletop in place so that we can easily or hopefully rather easily take the slab top off and move this table around if we want to butt this up to our big kitchen table to make a huge dining table for bigger events with the family. After getting these support blocks in place, I used a Craig 90 degree drill bit to drill a 3 8 hole using another Craig drill bit all the way through. Now. Originally, I only had pins on one side, thinking that would be good enough, but uh, a couple weeks later, I went through and drilled the additional hole through the support on the other side, 
because we noticed that if you leaned on one side of the table and not the other, it would pivot a little bit. So we got pins on both sides now and we are as stable as can be. As always, spray finisher don't do it at all unless it's a flat surface as we discussed before, but I am using my tried and true general finish sanding sealer with Enduro Clear Poly and I am doing two coats of clear poly with the Fuji spray system on there and it is a beautiful finish. Then transferring inside, the pedestal is actually relatively easy to maneuver around and then with a little bit of help from the wife we drop the tabletop into place and it looks beautiful we have used it a couple of times for games and we have butted it up to the long kitchen table as well and it is awesome well that is a wrap on the game table it works great we've brought this into the kitchen a couple of times and butted up against our dining table for a big long dining table for when the fam comes over and we also have played some epic Catan and Memoir 44 games on here, and the kids love it as well. The, the wife likes to sit there by the window, write letters, and read in the morning with the sun blasting through there the few times we do see sun in Michigan. But it's a wonderful table. We're glad to have it, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.